Hello everyone, welcome to Meat, Fish, Poultry, Process Technology Lecture Series. My name is Shaya Prasad, I am an Assistant Professor at Department of Food Technology, Vignan's Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. So in our today's lecture, we will be having a discussion on one of the important concepts that is preservation of meat as well as meat products. So in our previous lecture, we have exclusively studied, so what are the different types of endogenous as well as exogenous infections, which are in turn contributing to the spoilage of the meat as well as meat products, wherein we have also focused on major sources of contamination, which is rendering the meat as well as meat product to undergo spoilage. So in our today's lecture, we will be studying about what are the different kinds of preservation techniques which can be implemented in turn reducing the spoilage and extending the shelf life of the meat as well as meat product. To, to begin with, whenever we are talking about preservation, we can exclusively classify them into three different types. So first one is preservation by controlling the moisture and second one is preservation by temperature control which can be increase in temperature or decrease in temperature and preservation by direct microbial inhibition. So these are the three important class whenever we are talking about preservation of meat. So let us now understand and study individual types and see what are the different kinds of preservation techniques which can be employed in individual type. Okay, so, the so first thing we have preservation by moisture control. So what are the different types of preservation techniques which can in turn reduce the moisture content thereby reducing the growth of microorganism. So herein we have different types which includes the drying, intermediate moisture foods, salting as well as smoking. So these are the in individual types which belong to the category of preservation by the moisture control. So let us now have an understanding on individual type. Be to begin with, we will start with the drying. So whenever we are talking about drying, it is exclusively to reduce the moisture content. By reducing the moisture content, we are in turn reducing the water activity which will not facilitate the microorganism to grow as well as multiply. As, as we have already studied, Water activity is one of the important factor which in turn decides what kind of microorganisms that are actually being growing in case of the food matrix. So our major aim is to reduction in the water activity thereby the growth as well as the multiplication of the microorganism are taken care and in turn it will be reduced to an extent that it will not render the food product to undergo any kind of a spoilage. Okay, So the drying meats can be successfully employed for both raw as well as cooked meat. Okay, So in case uh, in, it can be implemented not exclusively only for the raw meat, it can actually be done for both raw as well as cooked meat. So drying can be performed for both type of meat. At present, drying plays a minor role in preservation of meat in case of commercial scale. So the commercial scale, whatever the meat product that is actually available, so drying is very limited. Okay, so it is very niche, very, very small portion of the commercial meat which is available are actually subjected for drying. Okay, so that is what it is mentioned in here. So at present, drying plays a very, very minor role in preservation of the commercial scale of meat as well as meat product. But that doesn't mean that there is no product at all. So however, there is a very few traditional dried meat which still enjoy a niche market in which they are considered delicacies. So what are these type of uh, meat products which are subjected for drying? It includes, so the first one is the jerked beef. Okay, so in South America, the dried meat is known as jerked beef, which prepared by cutting the beef into strips and dried rapidly in the air. So the jerk beef is one of the important example wherein the beef which is sliced into a smaller strips, it dried exclusively by the rapid air. So that is about the jerk beef. I have also given me an, another example in here. So this is the picture which effectively shows how exactly the jerk beef actually looks like. Okay. So next thing I have given an example of chalk. Okay. So the dried meat product which is available in Uruguay as well as Brazil. Okay, so these are the two nations which exclusively uses chalk, which is nothing but the sun dried, salted, and sun dried beef. Okay, so that is nothing but the chalk. So, herein I have also given you a picture which effectively gives you an idea like how exactly the chalk beef actually looks like. Okay, so this is about the products 
which are dried and are commercially available but most of the product which is available on the market shelf or the retail shelf are not subjected for drying process there is only limited portion of the market which is called as the niche market which focuses exclusively on the dried meat products okay so the next thing we have another important type that is intermediate moisture meat or intermediate moisture food okay so what exactly intermediate moisture food mean so sun drying of meat is one of the earliest preservation technique used by man so it has been used by mankind time immemorial okay so from the earliest stage it is exclusively used as a preservation technique that is the sun drying okay so such meat had meager dehydration capacity resulting in poor juiciness as well as texture so the sun dried meat which has been used as a technique for drying of the meat as well as meat product so in such kind of meat the most exclusive problem that was observed was dehydration capacity of the meat is reduced thereby it will have a poor juiciness as well as texture so that is one of the major problem that was exclusively observed in case of sun dried meat as well as meat product so later to overcome this particular problem so the studies were carried out and it was found that whenever we are maintaining in maintaining a moisture content of anywhere between 20 to 50 percent and such kind of meat is rehydrated after this drying process then the juiciness as well as texture of the meat will be retained or it will be regained after the rehydration process so that is nothing but the intermediate moisture meat product okay so wherein whenever we are drying the product we will have to exclusively maintain a moisture content anywhere between 20 to 50 percent so upon rehydration it will regain back its juiciness as well as the texture which in turn increases the palatability characteristic of meat as well as meat product okay so such product were resistant also to bacteriological spoilage and could be held without refrigeration so another advantage of intermediate moisture foods is that so they will be resistant to bacteriological spoilage so most of the bacteria will not be able to grow because the available moisture content is extremely less okay so which will not facilitate the growth of bacteria so thereby it will be it can be held without refrigeration also so the co capital cost will also be reduced by having intermediate moisture meat so these are the advantages of intermediate moisture meat okay so these products were referred as intermediate moisture meat or IMM what is exclusively written in here okay so IMM IMM is nothing but intermediate moisture meat where the meat product is maintained at a moisture content anywhere between 20 to 50 percent so it will impart moderate juiciness as well as texture upon rehydration okay so that was about the intermediate moisture meat okay so next thing we have another important technique which is regarded as salting technique so how exactly salting is going to have an effect on the quality of the meat as well as meat product and also how exactly it is going to check on the microbial growth as well as multiplication we will try to have an understanding on the same so one of the primary and major objective of addition of the salt to any of the product to improve the flavor characteristics as we already know so addition of salt will actually increase the flavor characteristic of the food product so the palatability characteristic and the flavor characteristics will eventually increase because of the addition of salt okay so another important thing in case of salt which is actually done is its primary purpose is to lower the water activity okay so the water activity will be reduced by the addition of salt okay so the water activity will be reduced when the water activity will be reduced thereby the microorganism number will also eventually get reduced so that is because of plasmolysis which we will study in the further slides okay so for now the primary objective of addition of salt is to increase the flavor characteristic and also it will check on the microbial growth by decreasing the water activity that is the available water activity will be decreased thereby the microorganism will not be able to grow as well as multiply okay so in salted meat dry salt is preliminarily applied onto the meat surface so the meat will be rubbed with the dry salting which in turn dissolves the meat fluid which is near to the surface okay so whenever we are rubbing 
the salt onto the surface of any kind of a meat so the the water that is available on the surface will be dissolved and thereby what happens it will withdraw all the fluids from the surface of the meat and the meat forming the hypotonic solution so it will in turn result in the formation of hypotonic solution so what exactly happens after it has dissolved all the available water from the surface of the meat so it will in turn migrate into the inside of the meat okay so in the it is then passes inward dissolves throughout the meat substance until the concentration of the salt is appropriate same throughout the meat substances okay so after having dissolved all the available moisture or after extracting all the available moisture from the surface of the meat then the salt will also migrate inside and then it will dissolve all the available moisture that is present inside the carcass or the meat or the meat product so that is one of the important advantage of having adding a salt as a major preservative okay so organisms that can grow in the presence of higher salt content are regarded as halophiles so there is a distinct category of microorganism which are called as halophiles so these are the um, microorganism which can in turn resist a higher salt content so halophiles can resist higher salt content and also can multiply at the same type of condition okay while the those which will only you know uh, withstand that high salt content are regarded as halodurics so halophiles can grow as well as withstand the higher salt content uh, concentration while halodurics are the one which can only resist the highest salt concentration but they cannot multiply at that particular given condition okay so that was about the salting so as you can clearly see in this picture i have given you two distinct pictures so this is the microorganism okay so this is the surface of the microorganism which is wherein the nacl is added at a very limited concentration so the concentration of this um, uh, nacl at this particular solution is 0.85 and this is the bacterial cell so what exactly is happening since it is an isotonic solution there is no migration of the moisture from inside the cell wall of the bacteria to outside environment because it is an isotonic solution that is very well balanced but in case of hypertonic solution so what exactly happens it results in a process called as plasmolysis so what is meant by plasmolysis it is nothing but the migration of moisture or the water from inside of the cell to the outside environment because it is an hypotonic solution as we are already aware of the osmotic um, uh, definition it is the migration of moisture from uh, higher concentration to the lower concentration okay so that is what is actually happening in here so the available moisture in case of the bacterial cell is extremely high in comparison to the outside environment so the migration of the moisture happens from inside the cell to the outside environment in turn leading to plasmolysis lysis is nothing but the killing okay so the 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 mig water will be migrated and thereby the bacteria will undergo the death okay so that is nothing but the plasmolysis so this is the effect which is exclusively seen whenever we are adding a salt as a preservative in case of any of the food products especially in here the meat as well as meat product okay so the addition of salt will check on the water activity thereby making the water unavailable for microorganism and in turn leading to plasmolysis which will kill the microorganism so this is one of the important technique which is very well practiced in the meat as well as food industry okay so there are different methods how exactly the salt can be added to a meat as well as meat product so herein i have given you four distinct type which are widely practiced okay so the first one is the dry cure okay so in case of dry cure what exactly happens the dry ingredients are rubbed on the meat so the grounded salt um, salt that we actually have so we will be rubbing it on the surface of the meat so that is regarded as the dry cure okay so to give you an example it is the curing of belly of a bacon okay so the bacon belly will be rubbed with the salt and then it will be 
subjected for further drying. Okay, so that is the dry curing. So the second one is the pickle curing. So as the name itself suggests, it means that we will be dipping the entire carcass or a portion of a carcass in a salt solution. Okay, so that is nothing but the pickle curing. So meats are immersed in a solution of ingredient. Okay, so not necessarily only solid if we are intending to prepare a specific kind of a product and we are adding any other kind of spices or condiments then that can also be called as a pickle curing but salt is a ma major constituent in here okay so the third one is injection curing so as the name itself suggests so the concentrated salt solution will be injected in case of the carcass okay so the concentrated solution of the ingredient is injected by a needle into the arteries as well as the veins of the meat via artery into the muscular tissue in various parts of the meat. So we will have to make sure that whenever we are making an injection or inj uh, injection of the ingredient, especially the salt solution through an artery or a vein, it has to reach to all the parts of the body, all the parts of the carcass in this particular case. So by having it done, it means that we are increasing the shelf life of the food product because the available moisture content will be reduced from the uh, from the meat which will be drawn by the salt content because of the hypertonic solution concentration and thereby the shelf life of the product can be eventually increased. So that is about the injection curing. So to give you an example, pork hams which are available commercially are subjected for injection curing. Okay, so next then we have direct addition method. Okay, so in case of direct addition method, curing agents especially here we are talking about salt. So salt are added directly to the finely grounded meat. So to give you an example, we have sausages. So, so sausages in what exactly happens? We will be adding the curing ingredients, especially the salt in here since we are discussing that. So we will be directly adding into the grounded meat and in turn it will lead to a specially uh, product. Okay, so in here you can consider sausage as an example for direct addition method. Uh, as far as the salt is concerned. So this was about the different techniques which are employed in an industrial scale for the addition of salt to the meat as well as meat product. Okay, so next type of preservation technique that we would be discussing is smoking. So herein we will see how exactly the smoking is going to have an influence on the overall characteristic and the palatability characteristic of the meat as well as meat product taking into consideration shelf life also as a criteria okay so smoking is often used with salt as well as curing it gives desired flavor aroma aids in the preservation of the meat as well as meat product okay so charcoal grills are mostly used in most of the household level okay so where the particular kind of the meat will be grilled by using charcoals okay so this charcoal will liberate a lot of phenolic compounds which in turn imparts flavor to the meat as well as meat products so let us see what are those flavor components and what role they exactly have as far as meat preservation is actually considered okay so smoke consists of phenols alcohols organic acids the carbonyls compounds as well as hydrocarbons so whenever we are grilling any kind of a meat or meat product so if we are using charcoal or any kind of a particular sawdust for that matter or any kind of a wood as a source of energy or heat so then it will in turn liberate a lot of compounds which can be the phenols okay or it can be alcohols it can be organic acids, it can be carbonyl compounds or it can be hydrocarbons. So the liberated compounds or the formed compounds as a result of reaction between the heat as well as uh, the meat uh, constituents, then it will result in the type of effect. It can be either imparting a better flavor to the product or it can also have an effect on the you know preservation activity as far as meat as well as meat product is considered okay so the desired effect of smoking of meat can be listed as below so let us have an understanding what are the desirable effects which can be actually observed whenever we are subjecting a meat or meat product for smoking okay so the first one is the meat preservation through aldehydes phenols as well as acids so they will antimicrobial effect Okay, so whenever we are grilling any kind of a meat or meat product, as I've already told you, it will liberate a lot of byproducts such as like aldehydes, 
phenols as well as acids so these type of compounds has anti microbial effect that means like they will sub they will exhibit a broad spectrum activity wherein both kind of any kind of a microorganism be it uh, bacteria be it yeast or a mold so will be taken care because of the formation of such kind of compounds during the smoking process okay so the next type of preservation which can be implied is the antioxidants impact through phenols as well as aldehydes so phenols as well as aldehydes are also antioxidants by nature so what they exactly do they will retard fat oxidation so that means like they are preventing rancidity so rancidity is one of the biggest challenge because most of the meat as well as meat product if it is rich in fat content that means that they are highly subject susceptible for undergoing rancidity which can be either hydrolytic or oxidative so hydrolytic is exclusively because of the presence of the enzyme that is lipase while oxidative rancidity is when the meat product is coming in contact with either copper either iron or it can be the outside environment okay so such kind of problem can be retarded whenever we are subjecting the meat or as well as meat product for smoking because the antioxidants which are in, uh, which are liberated during the process of smoking that is the phenols as well as aldehydes will retard the fat oxidation thereby preventing the hydrolysis of fat and in turn extending the shelf life of the meat as well as meat product okay so the next desirable effect that is actually seen is the smoke flavor through phenols carbonyls and other okay so the smoky flavor to the most of the grilled product is imparted okay so this is exclusively because of the phenols as well as carbonyls so that palatability characteristic as far as flavor is considered and also the consumer capacity of consumption will in turn actually increase because of the smoky flavor in case of the meat as well as meat products so that is also one of the important advantage of having a meat or meat product subjected for grilling or smoking okay so smoke color formation through carbonyls so the color will also be an important characteristic as far as the palatability of the meat as well as meat product is considered so whenever we are subjecting the meat as well as meat product for grilling or uh, smoking the color characteristic of the meat is also changed okay so it makes the product more attractive so that the consumer will tend to buy it more okay so that is also one of the important advantage of having the meat as well as meat product subjected for smoking or grilling purpose okay so this was about the first important category that is the reduction of the moisture content okay so the second end we have preservation technique by temperature control wherein we will be exclusively studying about two of the important types that is chilling as well as freezing okay so let's study what exactly chilling means so modern packaging house involves chilling of meat promptly and rapidly to a temperature of which is nearly freezing and chilling storage okay so what exactly that means so we will be subjecting the meat as well as meat product to a specific temperature which can vary anywhere from minus 1.4 to 2.2 degree centigrade so that is the available temperature where the meat as well as meat product will be subjected for chilling process okay so the time limit for chilling storage of beef is 30 days while it for pork lamb and mutton is one to two weeks so if you are keeping any kind of such kind of a product like beef moat pork as well as mutton so the uh, the shelf life or the keeping quality of such kind of meat will in turn increase so in case of beef it is around one month while in case of pork lamb as well as mutton it can range anywhere between one to two weeks so this is just after having an animal slot slaughtered and after the evisceration process it can be directly subjected to a chilling room where the temperature that is maintained is anywhere between minus 1.4 to 2.2 which in turn has an effect on the keeping quality of meat as well as meat product okay so the storage time can be lengthened by storage of meat in an atmosphere containing added carbon dioxide ozone or temperature so 
hurdle technology can also play a important role in here okay so here not just chilling if we are adding another kind of a preservative that is nothing but the carbon dioxide okay so at the addition of carbon dioxide what it is doing it means that it is creating an anaerobic environment so thereby whatever the anaerobic microflora that might be present will be in turn taken care or reduced so the chilling in combination with the carbon dioxide or ozone or other temperature techniques will in turn extend the keeping quality of meat as well as meat products so that is one of the added advantage as far as chilling is actually considered Okay, so the increasing amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere inhibits the microorganism but also hastens the formation of metmyoglobin and the, hence the loss of bloom or natural color is also observed. So that is one of the added disadvantage to this particular process. So if we are adding carbon dioxide along with the chilling process so what ideally happens is like it is creating a reduced environment that means that the presence of oxygen is extremely less. So what ideally happens is like there is rapid conversion of the color that means like the met myoglobin will be formed which in turn imparts brown color to the meat product which makes the product unattractive and palatable characteristic will eventually decrease. So that is one of the major problem which is actually observed whenever we are performing chilling along with carbon dioxide as another hurdle for the microorganism. But we are already aware that the addition of carbon dioxide will eventually reduce the number of microorganisms but the problem that is seen in here is the color will be lost. So the natural color of meat is regarded as bloom. Okay, so this natural color will be lost because of the formation of metmyoglobin. So as we are already studied the color characteristic of meat, so the metmyoglobin will impart brown color to the meat as well as meat product. Okay, so that becomes very very unattractive and unappealing thereby the product characteristic and the product capital will be lost eventually. So that is one of the disadvantage of addition of carbon dioxide to the meat as well as meat product also. Okay, so next, one, next important thing that we will be studying is about the freezing. Okay, so so far we have studied about the chilling where the meat as well as meat product will be kept at a temperature anywhere between negative 1.4 degree centigrade to positive 2.2 degree centigrade. So let us have an understanding what exactly the freezing is doing to the meat as well as meat product. Okay, so you uh, uses of low temperature. So commonly adopted method to increase the shelf life of foods. So consider any kind of a low temperature technique be it chilling or be it freezing. So what ideally they do is they will commonly it is one of the most commonly implemented technique wherein the shelf life of the food product will be increased okay so next thing the temperature normally that are actually used for this particular thing includes the cellar storages so this cellar storages is not exclusively for meat as well as meat product because the temperature that we are maintaining is less than 15 degree centigrade and it is suitable only for certain vegetable products such as like potatoes cabbage apples as well as bananas so as far as the meat as well as meat product is considered we have the chilling temperature which can range anywhere between 0 to 10 degree centigrade while in specifically when we are talking about meat as well as meat product it is negative 1.4 to 2.2 degree centigrade okay so it is suitable for milk eggs okay so eggs can be stored at a refrigeration or chilling temperature okay and vegetables as well as fruits can also be stored at the chilling temperature so next then we have freezing so whenever we are talking about freezing, especially in case of meat as well as meat product, the product will be kept at a desirable temperature ranging from negative 18 to negative 40 degree centigrade. So this is exclusively suitable for the meat products such as like meat, fish as well as other vegetable products such as like peas. So this is of an important concern for us. Okay. <coughs> so let us have an understanding what is the ideal difference or the distinguish between slow freezing as well as quick freezing so what exactly happens in slow freezing what ideally happens in the quick freezing so let us distinguish between these two important freezing techniques okay so the slow freezing as well as quick freezing so in case of slow freezing we have already the large ice crystal formation so larger ice crystal formation will actually happen and thereby 
in case of quick freezing smaller ice crystals are actually formed so one of the major problem that can be observed in case of slow freezing is that the larger ice crystal formation which is highly undesirable so whenever we are having a larger ice crystal formation since the ice crystals are extremely sharp there is always a problem that it will in turn damage the surface of the meat as well as meat product and whenever we are subjecting such kind of a meat product for thawing purpose there is always a drip loss which is in turn observed so that is one of the major problem with regard to the slow freezing that is large crystal formation and whenever we are subjecting it for thawing there is always a drip loss which is eventually observed okay so we have already studied what exactly drips loss in your previous classes okay so the gradual slowing of enzyme action so enzyme action whatever the enzymes that might be present it can be protease or it can be lipase so their activity is not exclusively or immediately hampered so in case of slow freezing their activity will be slowly hampered okay so that means they will be active for a specific duration of time and there is a probability that they will act on the corresponding protein as well as fat and bring about proteolysis as well as lipolysis in turn rendering the food product to undergo an undesirable change okay so that is one of the another disadvantage of slow freezing but in case of quick freezing there will be a rapid slowing of the enzyme action so these type of enzymes such as like protease as well as lipase their activity will be immediately hampered thereby we will in turn prevent the formation of any kind of an undesirable chemical compounds so that is about the importance of the quick freezing so next important difference is the thawed with the time so that means like for thawing it takes a lot of time okay so in case of quick freezing it can be thawed faster okay so occurs slowly in case of the deep freezer so you will have to keep or dump all the meat as well as meat product inside the deep freezer okay so and the process of freezing will begin very slowly but in case of this there will be a blast of air which will uh, actually uh, render the meat as well as meat product to undergo immediate freezing okay so that is an another adv added advantage so it takes longer time to freeze depending on the composition consistency and container of food that is being held and here it takes shorter time so the time is also a constraint for us so so in case of slow freezing as it the name itself suggests it takes a longer duration of time for having a meat as well as meat product to be frozen while in case of quick freezing the time that is taken for having a meat as well as meat product to undergo any kind of a uh, fr freezing so it takes less than 30 minutes or up to 30 minutes of time is significant enough to render the food product to undergo quick freezing so this was about the distinguish between the slow as well as quick freezing so the freezing often used to preserve meat during shipment over a longer distance so whenever we have to tra have the meat product transported to a longer distance then we will individually or then we will exclusively go for freezing of the meat as well as meat product so the large pieces of meat examples the halves as well as the quarters are sharp frozen that means it is quickly frozen while the smaller fancier cuts will be quick frozen in the uh, wrapped packages okay so that is one of the important type okay so the preservation of frozen meat is increasingly effective as the storage temperature drops from anywhere between minus 12.2 minus 28.9 degree centigrade so that is the temperature range that is actually ranging as far as the freezing of the meat as well as meat product is genuinely considered okay so the freezing process kills about half of the bacteria and the number decreases slowly during the storage period okay so most of the mesophile thermophiles as well as thermodurics will be destroyed because of the decrease in the temperature so only the, those category of microorganism such as like psychrotropes as well as psychrophiles will in turn survive and um, grow in that particular uh, temperature okay so let us have an understanding what are those type of microorganism which can grow exclusively in the chilling as well as 
freeze frozen temperature so the microorganisms such as like the bacteria lysodomonas acinetobacter alkali genes micrococcus pediococcus leuconostoc streptococcus lactobacillus flavobacterium proteus and including fungi that is yeast as well as mold so these are the category of microorganism that is a bacteria as well as fungi which can or which have an ability to grow and resist the freezing temperature okay so such as like pseudomonas they can even resist that is they can be a psychrotrope as well as a psychrophile so they can resist the te uh, freezing temperature and and can also multiply at the same temperature so these are the important class of microorganism which in turn has an ability to render the food product to undergo any kind of an undesirable change at the freezing temperature as well okay so the next type of preservation technique that we would be studying is the preservation by direct microbial inhibition so herein we will be focusing exclusively on the addition of the antibiotics which are currently in practice to most of the food as well as food product and the chemicals which are exclusively being used and what is the importance of irradiation as far as meat as well as meat product is considered so the major aim of addition of antibiotics chemicals as well as irradiation is to directly have a control over the microorganism number so the microorganism number should be eventually decreased so the inhibition of microorganism can be facilitated by the addition of antibiotics or the chemicals or it can be via the addition or by subjecting the meat as well as meat product for irradiation process so let us now understand what is the efficacy or effect of addition of such kind of antibiotics chemical as well as irradiation technique is having an influence on the shelf life characteristic of the meat as well as meat product so the first thing we have antibiotics so as we already know antibiotics so what kind of antibiotics are actually being used let us have an understanding on the same so the antibiotics when used in a required concentration impart no flavor no odor to the meat and do not discolor the product while most of are considered to be relatively harmless to the human beings so there is a perception in an individual's mind that the addition of the antibiotics at a uh, lower concentration will have an influence on the color characteristic the flavor characteristic so there has to be a compromise which is actually untrue okay so which is not true actually so if we are adding any kind of a antibiotics in a considerable amount it will not have an impact on the flavor or on the odor and do not have an influence on the color characteristic of the meat as well as meat product so that is one of the important thing so and also they are extremely harmless to the human uh, human beings okay so the broad spectrum antibiotics such as like uh, chlorotetracycline oxytetracycline and chloramphenicol so these are the most commonly used antibiotics which exhibit broad spectrum activity so whenever i'm talking about broad spectrum activity it can have an F activity on the bacteria such as like both gram positive as well as gram negative uh, bacteria and also it can have an influence or check on the growth of fungi which is both yeast as well as mold so the addition of such kind of antibiotics to the meat as well as meat product will exhibit the broad spectrum activity okay so to against the class different class of micro organism so infusion of beef carcass with tetracycline antibiotics seems to have improved their keeping quality and deter the internal spoilage so there has been a study which evidently described the fact that whenever the beef carcass is in, uh, injected with a specific kind of an antibiotic called as tetracycline which is again an antibiotic which exhibit or shows broad spectrum activity against a wide variety of microorganism it was found that it in turn increased the shelf life by retarding the internal spoilage so internal spoilage by the microorganism which might be a possible threat as far as food safety is concerned so by the addition of tetracycline it was eventually taken care so the internal spoilage of the meat as well as meat product was significantly hampered by the addition of the antibiotics such as like tetracycline so that is one thing which has to be effectively taken into consideration that means the addition of any kind of an antibiotic at a desirable or permitted level will not have an effect on any kind of a um, characteristic such as like the flavor 
odor as well as the color and in turn it will also be safe for human consumption okay so that is something which is very interesting okay so the antibiotic in case of the meat as well as meat product can be applied in a variety of ways so what are those types so antibiotic may be fed to the animals over a longer period of time okay so that is one way of having the antibiotic presence in case of the meat animal and it may be fed more intensively for a shorter period of time before slaughtering and it may be infused into the carcass or into the parts of it and it may be applied to the surface or to the pieces of meat and mixed with commun uh, comminuted meat okay so that is the four different ways in which the antibiotic can be applied to the meat as well as meat products so the one way is to having an animal feed on this particular kind of an antibiotic for a longer period of time so what ideally happens is whenever uh, the uh, animal is consuming the antibody or antibiotics what whatever that is so the presence of it will be there in the bloodstream so when the antibiotic is there in the bloodstream there is always a possibility that it will reach to every other organ so when such kind of an animal is subjected for slaughtering we can actually have a kind of a preservation effect in case of the specific special carcass where the animal were fed with a special kind of an antibiotic so that is one way so it can also be fed intensively for a shorter duration of time prior to the slaughtering of an animal okay so this is another way so next way is after the slaughtering so after the post-mortem of an animal we can have it infused into the car carcass as well as different parts of the meat okay so which in turn uh, uh, increases the shelf life of the meat as well as meat products and the final one is to mix it with the minced meat or comminuted meat okay so these are the different types how the antibiotics can be applied to the meat as well as meat product in turn extending the shelf life of the product okay so herein i have established a table which gives you an idea about what are the different types of permitted uh, antibiotic and what class of microorganism are they actually affecting what is the desirable ph which is actually required to have a uh, significant activity of these kinds of uh, antibiotics and what about the stability as far as the meat product is considered so let us see one first example that is chlorotetracycline Okay, so the chlorotetracycline is the name of an antibiotic and it is showing a broad spectrum activity against the category of bacteria both gram positive as well as gram negative. So the effective pH range where such kind of chlorotetracycline will be, effect, will be effective is anywhere between 4 to 7 pH. So simultaneously the stability can be for a period of 2 weeks at a pH of 4 degree centigrade and rapid deterioration can be observed over a pH of 7 or above. So the ideal pH which has to be maintained whenever we have to have an um, you know like whenever uh, the chlorotetracycline is added and its effect, uh, effective activity has to be exhibited against the bacteria both gram positive and gram negative is 4 to 7 degree centigrade. So if that pH goes anywhere between or anywhere above uh, 7 there will be a rapid deterioration that can be observed in case of meat as well as meat products. So similarly, we have oxytetracycline. So in case of oxytetracycline, it is effective against both gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria. Okay, and the effective pH range that is required or desirable is 4 to 7 pH. Okay, and the coming to the stability, we can keep the meat as well as meat product for one month when the pH is 3.9 degree centigrade and the temperature is 5 degree centigrade and rapid deterioration is ab uh, observed above a pH of 7 degree centigrade unless and until it is subjected for refrigeration. Okay, so similarly the other type of uh, antibiotics such as like penicillin is effective only on gram positive type of microorganism. So that means that it is not showing the broad spectrum activity it is very very narrowing down to only gram positive microflora okay so the gram positive gram negative microorganism can effectively grow in the presence of penicillin as an antibiotic and moreover the effective ph range that is desirable for such kind of uh, um, um, uh, antibiotic is 5 to 7 ph and similarly 
the stability two days at a pH of 6 uh, when the temperature is maintained at 10 degrees centigrade and the rapid deterioration is observed below 5 or above 7 degree sorry 7 pH. So that is about the importance of the antibiotics which is exclusively used or injected or uh, you know fed to the animal which is going to have an effect on the keeping quality of meat as well as meat product okay so besides penicillin we also have streptomycin okay and dihydrostreptomycin as well as polymyxin so in case of polymyxin as well as the uh, streptomycin and de de uh, de uh, dehydrostreptomycin they are effective only against gram negative microorganisms especially the bacteria okay and the corresponding stability value ranges anywhere between 2 to 3 months at a pH of 4 to 7 below 7 degree centigrade for streptomycin and dihydro or uh, streptomycin while in case of polymyxin it is 4 to 8 and 2 months at a pH of 6. So this is the stability, the pH range or the effective pH range and the class of microorganism it is actually effective on and the important name of the antibiotics which are exclusively being used or in practice. Okay. So the presence of antibiotics or the addition of antibiotic as an additive in most of the food product is not acceptable in every other country so this might be acceptable in one country say USA but this is not acceptable in case of India okay so the regulation as far as the presence or the addition of antibiotic is concerned has to be thoroughly checked because it is different for individual country okay but these are the permitted antibiotics which can be effectively used in uh, in in the in the meat as well as meat product so now let us have an understanding on what are the different types of chemicals which are regarded as grass that is generally recognized as safe can be added as an additive in turn to increase the shelf life of the meat as well as meat product okay so the food additives which are specially added to prevent the deterioration of the food have been referred as chemicals preservative and should be grass. So to prevent the deterioration of the food, it can be any kind of a chemical deterioration or microbial spoilage which is happening. So to prevent that we can have a certain kind of a product such as like the chemical preservatives to be added. So such kind of preservative should be regarded as grass which is nothing but generally recognized as safe okay so the grass it has to be specially taken into consideration they should be generally recognized as safe so what kind of activity such kind of chemicals actually bring in in case of meat as well as meat product is concerned. So these preservative can either be bactericidal or bacteriostatic. So whenever we are talking about bactericidal it means like it is bringing about the lysis or killing of microorganism. Okay. So cidal. Okay. So which means lysis. It is killing. Okay. So bacteriostatic. Static means it is stagnant so it will stop the growth of microorganism so the addition of chemical preservative can either be bactericidal or bacteriostatic so bactericidal it is rendering the microorganism for killing while bacteriostatic it is in turn stopping the growth of microorganism okay so the principle of chemical preservative includes stopping the growth of microorganism and food enzymes and chemical reaction auto oxidation is reduced so by the addition of such kind of chemical preservatives we can reduce the population of microorganism or have a check on the growth of microorganism and in turn we also have an ability to check on the auto oxidation process so if the auto oxidation is happening it means that there is lot of chemical changes that is happening in case of the food product so that has to be effectively taken care by addition of the antioxidants okay so that is possible only when we are adding chemical agents to the meat as well as meat products so that is one of the important aspect that has to be noted in here and characteristics so moving on let us have an understanding on what kind of chemical preservatives are effectively being used so as i've already told it is nitrates as well as nitrates nitrites which are which are 
predominance. So nitrates as well as nitrites not only help bacteria but also not only help to kill the bacteria but also produce a characteristic flavor and gives the meat a pink or red color. So that was one of the important characteristic of using such kind of preservatives such as like nitrites as well as nitrates. So whenever we are using nitrates as well as nitrates, nitrites they will kill the bacteria for sure. So they will bring in the lysis of the bacteria but also they will impart certain characteristic flavor. Okay, so characteristic flavor and thereby it will impart also the characteristic color which is pink or red color to the meat as well as meat product which is highly desirable because the aesthetic appeal of the meat will eventually increase if it appears pink or red in color. So the aesthetic appeal will eventually decrease if it is brown in color. So the brown color in case of meat is effectively because of formation of a significant pigment called as metmyoglobin. Okay, so that is about the nitrates as well as nitrites. One of the possible disadvantage or it is currently under discussion is that these nitrates as well as nitrites are bringing in a lot of undesirable changes in case of meat as well as meat products. So currently the use of nitrites as well as nitrates in case of meat as well as meat product to extend the shelf life and to impart aesthetic color as well as flavor to the final product is currently under discussion and debating. Okay, so possibly these are the important chemical agents which are used as a preservative to extend the shelf life of meat as well as meat products. So this was about the chemical. Then we have irradiation technique. So what kind of irradiation techniques that are in practice which are facilitating the increment in the uh, shelf life of the meat as well as meat product. Let us have an understanding on the same. Okay. So the irradiation may be defined as emission and propagation of energy through space or through a material medium. So whenever we are having a material medium, so the, the emission as well as the propagation of the energy through that particular medium is regarded as irradiation. Okay, so there are two types of radiations. So first one is ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. So in case of ionizing radiation, we have gamma rays where cesium-137 is used as a source okay and we have cosmic rays and also we have x-rays so the gamma rays can be produced by cesium-137 okay so non-ionizing radiation includes the uv infrared rays as well as the microwave so these are the two important radiation types that is ionizing as well as non-ionizing so which are exclusively can be implemented in case of food preservation technique as well okay so what is the action of such kind of uh, radiation they will bring about the mutation in case of dna so the dna of an individual microorganism will be mutated and ultimately the microorganism will be killed okay so next thing it is also regarded as cold sterilization because there is no um, uh, we are not subjecting it for heat treatment it is just the radiation which is doing the same uh, um, uh, same work as that of the heat so hence it is regarded as cold sterilization as well okay so coming to the application of the gamma radiation so because gamma radiation is mostly used in case of food industry so what kind of effect it can actually bring in and what are its application as far as food products are considered so whenever we are discussing about the gamma radiation so it can be classified the application can be classified into rad apertization radiorization or radiocidation and radiorization okay so these are the three important applications so let us now understand what exactly rad apertization means so rad is nothing but the radiation apertization is nothing but the canning process okay so the radiation by the canning is done by the help of radiation technique that is gamma radiation okay so it re, it is equivalent to the uh, radiation sterilization or the commercial sterilization used in canning industry okay so the canning industry effectively uses apartization technique where they will be subjecting the can to a temperature anywhere between 121 degrees centigrade for a period of 15 minutes 
Okay, so the similar kind of an effect can be brought in in case of using gamma radiation, especially through an application called as rad appetization. Okay, so here the radiation level that is being used is 30 to 50 kilogram. Okay, so one kilogram, as I've already mentioned, it is here. Okay, so this is about the rad appetization as an important application in case of food industry. Okay, so second one is radiocidation. Okay, so the radiocidation is having an equivalent effect as that of the pasteurization. So similarly, if we are talking about pasteurization of the milk, where in case of <coughs> HTST pasteurization, we will be subjecting the milk to 72 degrees centigrade for a period of 15 seconds. Okay, so similar kind of effect can be brought in by subjecting the milk to radiocidation where we will be employing an energy of 2.5 to 10 kilogram. Okay, so that is the uh, amount of energy that is or the radiation energy that is being used, which in turn corresponds to the same effect as that of pasteurization. Okay, so next one we have radiurization. So in case of radiurization, it reduces the spoilage species of microorganism where the radiation that we are effectively um, applying is 0 0.7 to 2.5 kilogram and it is mostly suitable for fresh meats okay so fresh meats as well as eggs fruits and vegetables cereal grains potatoes onions and etc so this is about the application of radiurization so in case of meat industry the important types that will be concentrating is rad appetization as well as radiurization so rad appetization so the canning of meat as well as meat product in case of radiurization, it is to effectively take care of the spoilage microorganism, which is bringing about any kind of a undesirable changes in case of meat as well as meat product. So this was about the importance of radiation in case of meat industry. So this was about the unit three, which exclusively speaks about the preservation techniques that are in place to extend the shelf life of the meat as well as meat product. To give you an overview, we have studied about three important preservation techniques which is the preservation by reducing the moisture content preservation technique by checking on the microbial growth directly and the preservation technique as far as temperature is considered so these are the three important varieties that we have studied and we have also understood what are the different types of uh, preservation technique that are actually employed in these individual types okay so that is all for today guys i hope this concept of preservation of meat is effectively understood by each and every one of you thank you very much